The whole Black Girls Gamers thing we covered the other day is starting to reach some lofty circles. Or more correctly, the generalistic idea that maybe we shouldn't be sexist or racist against a specific group of people. I know, radical thinking there, and <laughs> yet this is where we find ourselves. As the other day, we covered the DEI consultant firm Black Girl Gamers threatening legal action against a website who said that Black Girl Gamers appeared to employ discriminatory hiring practices. And by appeared to, I mean they put out a tweet looking specifically for Black female gamers to cooperate with appears to discriminate indeed. And now, the United States of America's foremost African-American, Elon Musk, is weighing in on the issue. It should not be acceptable for any company in the gaming industry to be racist and sexist against white guys. Now, of course, it is actually technically illegal to discriminate against anyone based on race or sexuality or a whole wide range of things, but this is not a regulation that is implied, or implied applied, equally. As we all know, there is one group in society you are allowed to discriminate against. As is seen by WDW Pro, I have a hard time pronouncing two W's in a row, saying here that as our attorney uh, stated yesterday, the Trent Report received a cease and desist from Black Girl Gamers aimed at him and that Park Place. That is the website that wrote the article alleging the discriminatory hiring practices. The cease and desist goes farther than anything that I've ever personally seen in a chilling freedom of the press. The response starts Sunday with Valiant Renegade. So, Black Girl Gamers have actually then sent out a cease and desist to the website for, well, stating what does indeed appear to be the truth, and in a rather diplomatic way as well. This has also then had further ramifications, as Niche Gamer responded to Elon Musk's tweet, saying, While we do agree with the base sentiment of gaming companies overplaying their hands per se, unfortunately we cannot cover this particular story or more stories like it without potentially getting punished by the PR firms hired by those same game companies who we have to rely on to get access to video games for reviews and coverage purposes. They have then also further pointed out that this is not them backing down, it is in fact them doubling down and getting in on the fight. We made this post last night because we're fed up of the status quo. To anyone saying we're bending the knee, this post is to say we're not. Making that post will already irritate the people causing us issues, and it's time we stopped placating them. So, this is of course a much wider problem that we've talked about at length on this channel. There is a very entrenched value system within gaming, which can be generally summarized as DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, wokeism, or ESG fund nonsense. These have a very overt left-wing political agenda, of course, which requires companies to tick certain boxes, and allows for certain discrimination, as as we in fact we covered in another video when I was responding to Asmongold covering my Helldivers video. This is the entire idea of capturing the culture, where you extend tolerance towards your people, in other words it is not discriminatory to not hire white people, but it is discriminatory to not hire black people as you deny tolerance to your opposition, so as to further cement your position in the marketplace of ideas by simply just closing the door on the opposition in total. And this has been well established, as Niche Gamer says here, the marketing companies that works with the game companies are all DEI companies, they are virtually all ESG companies. They get a lot of their fundings from these organizations, and the game companies themselves encourage them to do so, because otherwise they might get attacked by the cancel culture mob. As we've also been seeing with Sweet Baby Inc, of course, being the most recent example, where the co-CEO said that if you don't get the money you need for DEI initiatives in your games, you should go to your marketing department and terrify them. These are, well, authoritarian fear tactics at their most simplistic and basest level here. And we absolutely know this is the case, Hell, I have personal experience with this on multiple occasions. In fact, there, there was an interesting little response to one tweet of mine recently that, that got me kind of thinking. So it started with this right here, where the trans flag is being slathered onto Warhammer miniatures because this is one of the ways in which they conquer a hobby, capture the hobby, by simply placing their iconography on anything and everything and going, this thing represents me now. It doesn't represent you though, because you're anti-me, therefore you're excluded from the hobby. Gatekeep or be gatekept, as we've talked about in multiple 
multiple occasions. But that then, I mean, there wasn't even anything really political in this statement other than Skaven do eat their babies, and so going, Skaven protect trans kid. Ah, that's, that sounds like a lunch plan for one of the two parties involved, frankly, but details, details. Which then provoked the following response, which kind of baffles and confuses me, but their basic statement is, okay, I'm crying victim, and I am the only person who has ever been directly targeted by Games Workshop. Which, as far as I know, is true. And hey, it isn't just GW. I know for a fact I'm on, I'm on a blacklist by GW. I've been told by people working at GW. I've been told indirectly by PR marketing firms. I received an email from the Chaos, was it Chaos Gate? The, uh, the Grey Knights game a couple of years ago now, I think saying, hey, you're a 40k channel, would you like to play our games? I'm like, okay, sure, yeah, that sounds cool. And then I got another email back going, ah, we're sorry, uh, we talked to GW and you're on a list there and we can't cooperate with you. Oh, you don't say. I know I'm blacklisted by Creative Assembly, I know I'm blacklisted by quite a few companies, Ubisoft, weirdly enough, being one of the exceptions. <laughs> but yeah, no, see, I've, I've never considered myself a victim. You know, because it's, it's a weird frame of mind, isn't it, to to take the mantle of victim upon yourself. It implies, well, weakness, doesn't it? It implies that you are being acted upon and that you are submitting to it. You are being victimized by something. And rather than do that, I've simply set out to do what I'm doing right now. Talking about this stuff, working to change the culture surrounding it, and one day maybe even returning Games Workshop to the position of, yeah, no, if you're a fan of 40k or Warhammer, you can play our games and we're just gonna ignore all of the politics. Which, I mean, it is a strange point of view, but yeah, she is correct. We are the victims of the progressives' attempt at gatekeeping us out of our very own hobbies. And this is, of course, even more so commonplace in the wider gaming industry. When niche gamers says that they will be unable to get access to the kind of coverage they need to exist as a video gaming website because they don't toe the political line, we know they are speaking the truth. We know this for an absolute fact. And we even have further demonstrations of this. Grumps, which many of you probably already know, was covering a very interesting little development. Microsoft Xbox mandates change the studio's highest speed baby ink erases white character. So he spoke to a developer that showed him a character that had been changed from white to black. Was it in, uh, was it in this thread? Maybe not, uh, but it's in a wider thread here, where they apparently managed to remove the character due to the recent mandates. So some of the Microsoft mandates is that they discourage characters with, um, what was it, exaggerated body proportions? So in other words, if you have a female with big tits and a massive ass, for example, those would be exaggerated proportions and need to be removed. Black Girl Gamers then launched their community, which they claim is over 10,000 yesterday, against Grumps to try and flag and mass report him. Because, as we have talked about again and again, gatekeep or be gate kept. We have only recently adopted the tools of gatekeeping in defense of ourselves against aggression, as I've talked about again on multiple occasions. I think it was at, um, was it here? Ah, there we go, yes. The main character of Hazel was swapped shortly after the Sweet Baby Ink enrollment from white to black. Again, there, there's no questions here. There, there's, no, there's no doubts about this. There's no speculation. This isn't a conspiracy theory. We have the facts thrown at us again and again and again and again in official company statements, in leaks like these which only underbuild and reaffirm what we already know to be true. We have the harassment and attempts at gatekeeping. We have the legal threats. We have the professional consequences that will be applied to to you if you do not tow the line. And the very fact that they are getting so desperate as to try legal measures, because be in mind here, this is the nuclear option, because black girl gamers in all due likelihood do not have a leg to stand on. As again, the park, the, uh, was it? The park place article 
It simply says these hiring practices appear to be discriminatory, as they do indeed appear to be. But legal action alone is of course a punitive action. Black girls gamers can go to their corporate founders. They can go to, what was it, Microsoft here, etc. They can go to ESG and companies and go, we are being harassed by the evil alt-rightists. Give us money to fund our lawsuits against them. But as the people they are targeting, well, they're going to have to rely on grassroots funding if they wish to fight back. Bearing in mind that legal action is an enormous expense. This is the most blatant form of bully tactic where they know they don't really have any defense here. They don't really have a case, but through legal warfare alone, they hope to be able to shut down an opponent. And bear you in mind how they would scream were these tactics to be employed against them. Which is exactly what we see in the gatekeeping sphere as well. We did not start this conflict, but by God do I hope we will finish it. So, um, yeah, I suppose we are the victims here by our opposition's definition. And I guess as they also say, well, what is it? There's, uh, there's no immoral action taken against one's oppressors? I'm learning a lot from the left, I'll tell you that. And a lot of their lessons are quite intriguing. <laughs> But I do hope this continues to go forward. I do hope that that park place will find the funding that they can to shut down this attempt at legal warfare once and for all. And, well, Elon Musk did say that if anyone was launched, uh, anyone had a lawsuit, lawsuit launched against them based on things they said on X, uh, maybe he'd be willing to weigh in as well. Maybe for once we have our own billionaire. We can but hope and dream, can we not? As perhaps one day we can actually apply the letter and the spirit of the law as it is intended. In other words, there should be no discrimination against anyone based on any of their characteristics, like skin color or sexuality or religion. Maybe we can return to those days, because personally, I quite miss them. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.